Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about the voltage taps that exist on lithium polymer battery packs and whether or not we can use them to power or operate other components within our radio control vehicles. I have a couple batteries in front of me. This is a six cell lithium polymer battery pack and you can see its voltage tap right here. This is the voltage tap that gets plugged into the balance board on your specific charger. These are used to balance out the battery packs so that all the voltages within all the different cells of your battery pack will be even. So here we have a four cell and as you can see we have less of these wires. Why? Because we have less cells within our battery pack. And the question here specifically now that we see the tap that we're actually dealing with, can we use this connector to power other components that we want to use within our radio control vehicle? So the answer to this question is both yes or no. Confused? Well I guess I am too. So let's talk about exactly what this means and why. When it comes to that voltage tap, if we again look at this voltage tap, we can see that we have a bunch of wires and each wire represents a different voltage that you can actually extract from this connector. If we do start off with the very first one, that's going to be a zero volt reference point. And as we move up from there, we can get the next wire at 3.7 volts representing cell one. Then we'll get the next wire, which could give us 7.4 volts if we utilize that reference zero volt mark again and so on as we go all the way through all the way up to a six cell pack. Now the problem is if you're going to tap into those specific cells, cell one and two, because you only need 7.4 volts nominally, you are going to drain those specific cells quicker than you are going to drain the entire battery pack. That is because the load that you're going to place on it is gonna be pulling power only from two of the six cells and the other four cells are going to maintain a higher voltage. Now it doesn't sound like much, especially if you're going to have a load that does not pull a lot of power. However, if you do have a load that's going to pull a ton of power, this can get you into significant trouble fast. With a lighter load, it can still get you into trouble and is definitely not something that is recommended. So how else can you go and tap into this extra connector found on your battery more easily? Well, what I would recommend if you really want to use Use this voltage tap is to get a specific connector that plugs right into your existing one. Don't mid tap the pack. What I mean by that is don't take a partial voltage of the battery. What you want to do is take the entire six cell pack and tap right from all six cells at the same time. Then what you can do is you can put a voltage regulator, one that is very commonly used to power receivers, and you can usually change the voltage from at least five to six volts. And if you get a better one, you can change the voltage from around that 5 volt all the way up to about 12 volts. I know Castle sells these types of voltage regulators. A couple issues that you could get into if you do decide and insist to mid tap your pack is that you could drain a couple cells lower every single run closer to that 0% capacity versus where you should be stopping the pack which is having at least 20% remaining of your pack with voltages that are usually above 3.70 or so. This is something that is going to hurt you in the long run and it's going to only exaggerate the issue you as time goes on. Or even worse, if you have your battery pack operating in your radio control vehicle, you may actually take too much power out of those cells that you're tapping into and that results in the pack actually dumping. Where those cells go way under the 3.00 volts and they become essentially useless to you because they have such a high resistance. This is not going to go well for you either because if you do drain those cells too far, you're not going to have the power to sustain flight if you're already already flying a radio control vehicle in the air. As soon as you enter a low voltage state with those couple cells, their internal resistance shoots up, which means you're gonna have not only lower voltage, but you're not gonna be able to pull as much current in that form as well. Overall, you're gonna have less power. If you're flying a radio control vehicle, this is not going to work out for you. You're gonna to have to make some quick decisions and hopefully you can get that radio control vehicle back on the ground so that you can actually get into that voltage tap and rearrange something with a voltage regulator. 
My recommendation, if you are trying to extract power to use for a different component on your radio control vehicle, is take the full entire voltage from that balance tap. If you're running a 6L, that is the 22.2 volt nominal, run it through a voltage regulator. There is not a huge penalty to pay for the size of the unit as well as the weight of the unit for what you get. This is what a Castle Beck looks like. You can see how small it is relative to my index finger. On the one side, you have the power input right here. This goes to your battery packs, your source power. On the other side, you have your leads that go to the radio. There's two leads which helps dissipate the amount of total current that this Beck can supply. However, for low currents, only one lead is necessary. And for completeness, let's take a look at how you would wire one of the CCBC 2.0 units into your system. So let's say you have the system that looks like what is pictured here in the diagram. Your electronic speed control may or may not have an internal supply that goes to the receiver. If there is an internal BEC in your ESC, in your electronic speed control, you will want to make certain that you disable that. Now you don't need to disable that through software. What you can actually do is disable the BEC within your electronic speed control through this wire. All you need to do is pull out the red wire from your connector and you can do that by just popping the connector pin right out of the connector for that positive lead. Once that's done, you have eliminated the actual electronic speed control from providing power to your RX. This is what is necessary in order to operate the BEC. Now on one side of the BEC, you're gonna have the positive lead going to the positive lead that is an input for your electronic speed control and the negative lead on your BEC is then going to the negative input from the battery and to your speed control. That is going to be placed in a parallel configuration. And then the two leads that come out of your BEC are then plugged into your receiver. Again, as mentioned already, you only need to plug in one lead if you have a low draw within your specific system. Now let's take a look at this other diagram. If you do insist on mid tapping, however, what you're gonna do is you're gonna mid tap one battery pack. I wanna make sure that this is clear because there's a right way to do this and there is a wrong way if you plan to do this and go down the route of mid tapping. The only reason you'd wanna do this is because your BEC does not allow for the proper voltage that you're going to run in your system. Let's say this is a 6S pack and a 6S pack and your BEC is not good for 12S. The Beck that we were talking about today is definitely good for 12 cells, but many BECs are not. The only difference on what you wanna do in order to mid tap this battery is make certain that your negative lead on your BEC is matching the negative lead into the electronic speed control. Why this is important is because this is essentially your zero volt reference point for the entire system. This battery pack is gonna be at zero volts here. However, at this negative lead, if you were to go and use this as the negative lead and instead have the positive coming into this lead, you would actually be tapping in at the 22.2 volt mark as well as the 44.4 volt mark. And you don't wanna do that because then you do not have a common zero volt reference. This is a definite rule that you will want to follow whenever you are wiring in a BEC to your system. And there you have it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.